This is Tales from the Ridge. Episode 3, Miss Cat and the Night Riders, Part 2. It was a full purple moon that rose over the speeding train of the intercoastal railway. The normally beige to red rock of the landscape turned to shades of pink, violet, and lavender in the light of the strange celestial body. Cat had not sat down since setting foot in the locomotive, and she didn't plan to. Her body felt the passage of each minute with increasing anxiety. Twenty minutes to the drop. Eighteen. Fifteen. Just as she checked the dashboard clock for the time, one of her night riders banged on the door. See what they want, she sighed to Reno, who sat slouched in the co-pilot chair, hat over his eyes. Reno groaned and hefted himself out of the chair. Looking through the peephole, he let out a tsk. It's Marge. Let her in. As the door whooshed open, Cat glanced at the young woman who entered. What? We've got a stowaway. Y'all can't deal with a goddamn stowaway without bothering me? Cat snapped back. The other boys were going to throw her off, but I smell something. Cat turned slowly. You smell something? She ain't intercoastal. Cat narrowed her eyes. Marge had an uncanny instinct for sniffing out things that were just slightly off. It was one of the few reasons Cat kept her on the crew. With this in mind, she nodded, following the young woman from the car. There was a brief moment of vertigo that overtook her as she stepped out onto the platform that bridged the two cars, the land speeding beneath them at a pace her eyes could not keep up with. Then they were across, and Marge was ushering her into the next car. A group of her night riders were clumped around a slumped form in the center of the room. Boss, one of them acknowledged as Cat approached. The stowaway looked up slowly. She was young, maybe seventeen. Wide brown eyes stared at her beneath a halo of thick black curls that framed her square face. What are you doing on this train? Cat asked bluntly. Escaping, the girl said meekly. Out from the frying pan into the fire, chuckled one of the riders. The girl shot them a look that might have killed. You come from the mines? The girl only nodded. Cat sighed deeply through her nose. She sank down until she was eye level with the girl and held her gaze. The teen rubbed at her dark nose with the back of her hand and met Cat's stare. You want a job? Do I have a choice? Oh, sure. This job, or you make your peace with the dirt outside this train? Some choice. There's always a choice, Cat said reverently. The girl hesitated. Fine. Marge, you fill her in on the plan. We unload in ten. The night riders around her nodded and whispered as Cat retreated to the locomotive. Reno had retired to his chair, tipping his hat up to gaze at her as she waltzed back through the door problem? Cat shook her head no. Reno shrugged and let the hat slip back over his eyes, crossing his booted feet at the ankle. A sudden emotion moved her, and Cat leaned forward to peck his lips. She could feel him smile as he kissed back, and then she leaned back up, eyes focused on the rails gleaming in the moonlight. Far beneath the hum and the screech of the train was a new sound, a growl, just barely perceptible. Cat tensed. Do you hear that? What? Asked Reno without sitting up. Cat spun and opened the door once again. 
Outside, she took a steadying breath and then climbed the small ladder to the right of the door until she could see over the top of the train cars as they twisted behind the locomotive like a snake. Headlights flickered in the distance. Damn! Cat pounded her hand against the roof of the train. Damn, damn, damn! Cat burst back into the locomotive and grabbed for the intercom. We got company! She hissed into the mic. Five minutes. Five minutes until the drop. Intercoastal goons? asked Reno. Too far away to tell, Cat responded as she strapped on the holster he handed her. Stay here. Don't let anyone inside. But not a soul, Reno, Cooper, or I swear I will take your balls this time. Yes, ma'am. Air rushed by as the door slid open and shut. She spun the bronze dial outside for extra measure and then stepped to the next car. Inside was the kind of organized chaos she'd come to expect from her crew. Unofficial officers were directing newer members and delegating. She passed through the scrum quickly, folks sidestepping her almost instinctively as she made her way to the back of the car and then out onto the small platform behind it. The rest of the train was boxcars lined top to bottom with gold bars. Cat's whole being vibrated as she climbed up the ladder and onto the roof of the car. Once she arrived, she steadied herself and then took a running jump to the next roof. She landed with a hard thump, pausing and then repeating until she arrived at the last car. The wind pushed against her, daring her to make a misstep. Cat pulled her shock pistol from the holster and held it at her side as the lead bike pulled ahead, outpacing the others and approaching her position. Howdy! called the rider over the wind. They were clad in all black, save for the red bandana that danced around their neck. Hey yourself! Cat shouted back, unamused. Well, that's not an intercoastal issue uniform you've got on there. Cat was growing tired of this. She raised her pistol, ready to fire. Hold on, hold on, yelled the driver. Cat, I presume you might want to turn around. Cat was so taken off guard, she obliged. There, in the purple glow of the night sky, stood the stowaway, her mouth wide in a crooked grin, a rifle aimed straight at Cat's center of mass. You're not a miner. Nah, said the stowaway. You be careful now, June, said the rider on the hover bike. We'll handle the rest of them. The rest of the gang caught up with the leader, bikes flanking the train on either side. June, Cat mused over the name. Something about it. The bikes and the leader in all black rang a bell in the back of her mind. Guthrie. June Guthrie. That's right, said June, her already wide smile spreading inches further. You're Cash Guthrie's little sister. That I am, said June, pulling back the action of her shock rifle so that it was primed if she needed it. Well, that'll make it all the worse for her when I kill you, Cat said coolly before turning into goo. A shot rang out, but Cat's form slithered beneath June's feet and then rematerialized behind her. Somehow, the girl was fast enough to spin, catching Cat's newly sprouted jaw with the butt of the rifle and sending her sprawling over the roof of the train car. She's good, was all the time Cat had for thought before she rolled, another shot denting the metal where she had just been. Cat kicked, catching June in the shin. June cursed, toppling to one knee. Cat raised her own pistol, and the train jerked suddenly, and the shot went wide, just past the edges of June's curls. In the back of her mind, Cat had to wonder how the rest of the Night Riders were faring. You know, you don't have to die. You could just surrender the train. The girl had flattened herself to the roof as the train spun around a curve. Some choice, Cat said back through gritted teeth. There's always a choice, June snarked in return. The train righted itself, and Cat took a chance. Rolling to her back, she sprang up and fired. The girl was gone. Cat turned, spinning around a few times before hesitantly peeking over the side of the car. June was not on the platform. She grunted, pushing the effort of staying balanced back from the forefront of her thoughts. Just then, a hover bike roared by. June waved at her from the back. Cat wanted to smack that lopsided grin off the girl's face. Cat took a running jump at the next car, 
Already she could see the drop point approaching in the distance. Trucks waiting. She had to stop the train. With a wiggle of her knees, Kat anticipated and then made the jump to the locomotive platform, nearly losing control over her form from the impact. She banged on the door. Reno! Reno! Stop the train! Cat? Reno! Stop the goddamn train! Hover bikes roared, and the train squealed as it came to a stop. Why Reno felt it necessary to blow the horn, she had no idea. Cat pressed her back to the door, pistol against her chest as the train slowed. It was an agonizing thing to feel the giant engine slowly rolling to a stop. Before she could even attempt to jump down, the door to the second car blew open, and a gigantic jontar stepped through. Cat cursed and practically dove off the train as one of her night riders landed in the dirt yards away, his body crumpling awkwardly as he let out a groan. Nice throw, Tack, said one of the hover bikes as he pulled up. Cat tried to scoot out of his eyesight, but even as she did, she felt the earth rumble as the jontar leapt down behind her. A gigantic hand pulled at the back of her coat, and Cat wriggled like a fish on a hook as she was lifted into the air and disarmed. Hold still. The jontar's voice was thick with the accent all four-armed, neck-frilled sentience of her particular breed carried. That one's a Therian, Tack, said the rider in all black as she pulled up. Better watch yourself, or they'll wiggle right out of there. Shill, Cat spat back. Why, well, I thought Therians don't abide by gender. The rider was standing on one leg, the other still draped over the bike as it powered down. Most don't, Cat snarled. I have a preference for humans and women. Well, I do apologize, ma'am, the rider dismounted and strode toward her. Ain't meant no offense. The woman in black was similar to June in a few key ways, enough for Cat to hazard a guess. Cash Guthrie? Well, my reputation proceeds me said Cash with a slight bow. And you must be Miss Cat of the Red Rose. Cat did not respond, feeling the weight of her form pressing against the coat by which she was suspended. We've got the trucks handled, said one of Cash's crew, appearing around the side of the locomotive. Thank you kindly, Barker, Cash said, without taking her eyes off Cat. How about you go check on Boone and the others? Barker obliged and hopped up into the second car. Now, Miss Cat, said Cash, taking off her hat to dust it, exposing the rows of small, intricate braids that descended to her shoulders. Intercoastal will be here soon, with all the force that entails. Cat instinctually started wiggling again until the jontar set her back on the ground and gripped both of her shoulders in broad, scaled hands. Do you feel proud of yourself? Cat interrupted. Doing the bidding of a company like that? Exploiting the citizens of this planet for profit? Cash thumbed the edges of her Stetson before setting it back on her head. Not particularly, but that's why, if you'll let me, I have an offer to make. Cat's eyes darted around to the others present and then back to Cash. Behind her, she could hear the night riders being let out of the car and deposited beside the train their muffled complaints like daggers in the gut. You and your fellows here abscond with your lives, and I'll make some excuse about how you got away. You having a reputation for that sort of thing shouldn't be too hard. And the gold? Cat asked. Gets returned to the company that's claimed it. Cash finished carefully. All of it? Well, you're not really in a place to be negotiating pointed out a new but familiar face as June appeared beside her sister. Cat bared her teeth at the once stowaway. You did kill a man back in Dry Creek, Cash pointed out. Doesn't make me particularly feel like rewarding you, Cat drew in a sharp breath. There is man in driving car, pointed out Tack. Cat had almost forgotten about Reno. She heard Barker arguing with him through the front door. For a moment, she considered leaving him behind. Then she sighed. Reno, get out of the damn train. There was a pause, and then the door whooshed open. In a moment, Reno was escorted to her side. So, how about it? Cash propositioned. Though the act physically pained her, Cat nodded. Tack forcefully led her to the truck that should have been full of intercoastal gold had everything gone to plan. 
The jontar lifted her into the driver's seat and waited as the rest of the night riders were tossed into the back end like bales of hay, hogtied and gagged. Reno climbed into the seat beside her. I'm real sorry, boss, he murmured. Ain't your fault, Cat said softly. I'd step on the gas if I were you, June's voice grated against her as Tack slammed the door. Dust spun up glittering mauve in the purple moonlight as Cat obliged. She would follow the rail until the first town, and then the gang would make a new plan. Cat glanced in the side mirror, narrowing her gaze as she caught one last look of June's crooked grin. A sudden impulse gripped her, and she stuck her head out the window as she pressed down on the pedal. This ain't the last you've seen of me, Guthrie sisters. And perhaps she was right. Thank you for listening to this episode of Tales from the Ridge. A huge shout out to all my patrons, Kat, Andy, Emily, Camille, Katie, Kira, Megan, Andrew, Rodney, Amanda, Fritz, Chelsea, Franchon, Jessica, Orsoya, Jill, and Willow. Stay tuned next month for a new episode, and please give me a holler on social media, Ari Levy Author on Twitter and Instagram. Cat said coolly before turning to goo.